Oh, how to build a pub. How does one build a pub? That very question has been the centre of this podcast for some time, and it could not be articulated if not for the fantastic voice of this week's guest. Hello, and welcome to the Build a Pub podcast with me, Alex Ravenhall, a person who writes Irish folk musicals in his spare time. The Build a Pub podcast is a spin-off of my original series, Social Isolation. I invite guests onto the podcast too, as the name suggests, build their own pubs. From what they have on draft, to what food they have serving, to what music they are playing, and hopefully get them to share with me some anecdotes and thoughts on the institution of the public house. I'm going to hopefully be releasing these podcasts every week on a Sunday for the foreseeable future. If you can't wait that long, you can also find all 11 episodes of Social Isolation on this very channel. Special thanks to Sam Nason for the graphics and Jack Petherham for the jingle. Today, I'm joined by that very same Jack Petherham, who's been asking the question for so long, it's only fair he has a chance to answer it. Please also remember to drink responsibly, and enjoy. Oh, how to build a pub. My guest today taught me how to not be afraid of who I am. What followed was the two of us doing a podcast on Pokemon unashamedly. His song on Spotify is also my song of lockdown, and no, it's not the Build a Pub jingle. Here to finally build his own pub is the fantastical Jack Petherum. Hello, Jack. How are Hello, you? Hello, Alex. I'm good. I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, we've already mentioned this between us, but I, I hear on the grapevine that you're, you're recording an album, Jack. Is that true? That is true. Your sources are correct. Yeah. I am indeed in the process of recording my own solo album under a uh, n- completely new name. Not not my own name. Uh, <laughs> and I'm about halfway through that. So that's that's been going very well. I've already recorded the, both the A side and B side single, which is uh, very exciting. It just blows me away. Like, I mean, obviously, you're currently in a very high tech studio, as you know. Mm. You know, we take this podcast very seriously. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a slight difference <laughs> in yeah, going into a proper funny. studio. I'll tell you what, the number of buttons in a professional studio is only marginally more than I'm sure the number of buttons that are in front of you right now. I, I literally have a turn on mic button and a stop recording button. <laughs> like I said, marginally more. <laughs> um, well, very, very much welcome. Uh, we're also going to do a first on the podcast and finish with one of your songs, an amazing song, if I may say. Oh. So, so we'll get to that in some sweet time. But first up, Jack, what I'd like to ask you mm. is... Very simply, uh, what is the pub to you? Is it a place you go with friends, family, by yourself? It's all okay. And, uh, you know, what what do you get out of it? Do you go to drink? Do you go to socialise? Or do you go to a bit of both? I'll tell you what, there's definitely a bit of both in there. Like, a pub is something that I associate with with friends. It's something that I associate with with people going, um, people messaging me saying, uh, oh, do you want to meet at the pub? You know, wherever wherever that may be, and basically, my my expectation in going to a pub is I will be drinking there for at least three hours or so. That's that's uh, that's a, that's uh, a given. Because I don't, uh, I I'm someone I don't really drink uh, a lot normally, but um, when it comes to certain scenarios where drinking is acceptable, I drink a lot. I, I'm exactly the same. I'm I'm very much one for a long pub session. I'm I, yeah. I'm getting there at twelve. I'm leaving at ten. You know, I'm, I'm yeah, not messing exactly. around, Jack. Yeah. I, sure. I also think like drinking at home, it's different. But when you when you've made the effort, you know, I've put on a coat, Jack. It's quite cold out. We're not even allowed in the bloody pubs anymore. So well, exactly. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stick around. I, I I have to agree with that. What is for you the the most expensive drink you've ever bought i'm just i'm just just curious now before we get into the the actual grips of the podcast i, I just mm. like to keep a tally yeah the most expensive drink that i have ever bought seek as well so, so you're, you're london as well so i'm i'm, I'm expecting yeah, this yeah so things are already so as far as london goes it definitely would be in london because obviously there's like there's bottles of stuff which are inherently obviously more expensive but then yeah. as far as single drinks are concerned if my memory serves there was definitely um a cocktail that i bought at a quite a swanky london bar which i'm pretty sure was more or less 25 quid get in the fucking bin Uh, sorry (laughs) (laughs) family podcast (laughs) Uh, hi Uh, mom uh no yeah 
which must have been like it. Mu- it must have been a special cocktail of some form. It must have had some magic in it because I have never ever seen a cocktail since that was that expensive. And why I bought it, I couldn't tell you. Was but, it worth it? At least, like, like, could you tell there was a markable difference in that tasting to say a ten pound cocktail? See, the thing is. It definitely did not. The price was not justified. <laughs> I, think, I think part of the reason it was that price is because of the place I was actually at. But also, on the other side, though, it was definitely a unique cocktail. I've never, I've never seen one like that before. Uh, so there, there's, there's a balance in that. There's a balance in that. I'll never do it again. But it's, been, it's just an interesting one. It is, and it's a it's a story to tell on the podcast. So thank you very much, Jack. Thank you very much. Well, that's enough bullshit. Let's get into the actual the podcast oh, itself. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Jack, to your pitch. You. You're here uh, yeah. to pitch your pub, which already exists, obviously. Okay. Uh, but what you're looking for is a bit more investment. You know, you're doing okay, but you want to really, you know, hit the hit the heights of pub success. You want to be the next, well, not Weatherspoons, but. The Black Bull in Yarm. It's a very successful pub. Exactly. That's what I aspire to be. So, uh, what I need to ask you first is, who who do you want to give you the money? Who do you want to invest in your pub and why? See, so my choice for who's investing is not so much down to their expertise in business, let alone pub business, but rather the... uh, aesthetic that they command and the type of the type of aesthetic I'd want the pub to have but I would absolutely uh, love for Sandy Tolzvig to be uh, <laughs> to be um, investing in my pub because I feel because she is one of my absolute favorite uh, human beings and I feel the aesthetic that she brings and the and the attitude that she has is something that would very much reflect in my pub as a whole I think that's a fantastic answer. I, I can really see Sandy doing a fantastic job. It would, it would be very quirky. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, see, I'm seeing factoids on the walls. I'm, I'm seeing mm-hmm. her hosting a quiz every other night with some mm-hmm. fantastic... Getting the QI guys in just to help her out with some... With exactly. Some, oh, I'm very, I'm very intrigued. It's a good choice. So, our Sandy, she rocks up. I'm going to say she drives a Vauxhall Viva. That's her car of choice. Yeah, that that'll make sense. Yep. And she pulls up, uh, she parks very very sensibly and carefully, and looks up. Uh, she has to look up because she's quite short uh, yeah. at the sign above your pub, which mm. obviously is the pub's bloody name. So what I want to know, Jack, is yeah. what have you what have you named your sacred place? And also, give me a bit of a description. Like, what's Sandy seeing? So the pub name I have chosen is the library. Um, <laughs> Good start. <laughs> yeah, it's called the library, and obviously there is a joke in there of people saying, "Oh, I'm just off to the library." But so there's 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 that classic bit of banter. But um, I feel it's got a it's it's again it's quite a, a a quirky name. I feel Sandy looking up to it will uh, make a sort of oh and a smile, you know, a, a little. Uh, I'm not, I, I, that was a very good impression. I, I really saw into that bit. <laughs> but um, that, that, kind of, that kind of idea. And I imagine the colour scheme of the facade of the library would be quite similar to a bookshelf in itself. So a lot of racing greens and maroons and, uh, and navy blues and the like. Is it quite an old-fashioned building? Is it, are we talking, uh, oh, or, or is it a bit of a yeah. modern, modern vibe? No, I definitely say it was. Uh, it's definitely a pub from the Tudor times that's been renovated, to to, to so the ceiling doesn't fall down. But <laughs> the um, the building itself, I'd say, was definitely an old one. That's fantastic. What about inside? Is it like are you kind of going full on with the library? So is it kind of shaped like a library on the inside as well, or is that more just of the, of the facade, as you say? I think I think more of the facade. I don't think I, I think there should definitely be whether they be real books or just painted on <laughs> uh, books on the books on the walls uh, to give them a nice a nice vibe, but a nice uh, not too. Big. I'm not. Uh, it's not that I'm not a, a fan of it, but I always prefer pubs which are have a smaller, more local, cosier feel, as it were. You know, they're, they're, there's only as far as there's only about ten seats or so, but there is a lot of standing space. Yeah. Um, and you know, you've got exposed wooden beams 
uh, on the on the top and uh, a dark oak wooden floor, that kind of thing. And the the bar would probably be made of the same material as the wood surrounding it in the in the, in the structure of the building in itself. So yeah, I think there's definitely that idea, and I can I envision round tables for some reason. But there we go. Well, that's just hey, it's Bucky's choice. Um, amazing. I see. Is it kind of one of these little niche secret places in a city, or is it more of like a, a local village ooh, pub? That's that's very interesting. I ooh, that's tough because because okay, the I'm, markup you can get on the city is extraordinary by just making it. It's just you know, my local the Crown. If that was in a city, it would it would be like eighteen quid a pint just because of the <laughs> you know the whole the wholesome like natural vibe of it. Yeah, no, there's definitely there's definitely a markup. Although you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not in it for the markup, but that uh, <laughs> of course, I guess I actually envision it in having said that being a, a secret place in in uh, in London because I have been to uh, places like that in London, like real real pubs and real bars and real speakeasies yeah. uh, in London, which are not even they're not on any map. And you just stumble across them, and uh, I think those are very. I think those are wonderful. I think there's definitely potential for it to be a village pub, but having it as a secret sort of hideaway is something that really appeals to me. It's it's kind of that escapism, and as as a city boy yourself, I'm sure like you yeah. can get a lot of satisfaction out of that. Yeah. Whereas I think for me, it would just feel like being at home with a lot more money. So I I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't really enjoy the experience that much. But as it's a secret thing, I think. I think that works. I think it works yeah. in, in the big. Old, would it be in London? Yes, I think it would either be. In, I think it would either be in London or Birmingham. Realistically, those yeah. are the two cities close to my heart. Or, or I'd go absolutely curveball and put it in Oxford. Go on, <laughs> go they, they, on. They, they could use it. You know, use a bit of livelihood. Um, yeah. Amazing. So Sandy gets to the door. She whispers the secret code. Uh, I'm yeah. obviously not going to mention it on the bloody podcast. Not, not anyone's know, getting in here. Uh, she gets let in. And first thing she does, as most people do, she walks up yep. to the bar. Uh, yes. You're behind it. You're wiping down the surfaces. You, you, you kind of been preparing for a coming, so you're a bit nervous. But you know, everyone's everyone's on you know best behaviour. Mm -hmm. And she walks up to the bar. She gets a stool because, as I say, she's quite short. Yes. Uh, and she first thing she wants is to see what you've got on draft. On draft, of course, you have two beers and two ciders. So, Jack, what have you got to offer, Sandy? So. My two, the two, the two uh, beers I definitely want on uh, tap are uh, two simple yet effective choices. I think I would want Doombar and Guinness. Amazing. Uh, purely because they are they're, they're two of my favourite beers, and also they serve very different purposes. You know, Doombar is a classic. You know, it's the cheapest thing you can get in spoons. But not only that, it's uh, it's a slightly sweet lighter taste and that very much contrast to the well the heaviness that is guinness yeah or the, you know a meal in a glass kind of thing so i think those two would be uh would be my uh, to start off with as far as ciders go now i'm not a huge fan of cider i used to be but i'm uh, a beer I don't, it, I don't drink it much anymore but one cider i definitely would have is aspel because it is a it's one of those ones where it's a completely uh, it's something you can have on a summer's day. Um, I've never heard of it. So is it is it like a pear or apple, or is it one of these kind of fruity summer ones? No, it's 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 an apple. Uh, it's an apple, and uh, I hope it's an apple. Yeah, it's an apple, <laughs> and it's very light and it's very clear, and it's almost it's it's all it's almost like diluted squash, but alcoholic and it's and that sounds really that, that doesn't sound very appealing but it weirdly is though i've had what do you, do, you know, do you know what the name of the um the ciders is in that pub we go to the pair in yeah. the pair they have um like eight different ciders and i can't remember what they're called yeah, they do they've got loads actually they've got a whole board of them um, um but there are certain um you know type of of cider like a, a certain make and they they it's very similar it's kind of like a cordially uh, drink like you you don't know what you're drinking uh, yeah, and it just yeah. tastes like a sweet fruit juice it's very it's very cordial is is is, is a good description because it is something where you can have uh, on a blazing hot day and it will just it's just refreshing exactly uh, good time and as far as the other cider is concerned i'd actually want to 
bring in a, a completely unheard of or exotic fancy cider, something from the middle, something from the middle of nowhere, something, something no one has ever heard of. Just have it there and don't explain it. Yeah, like, but, uh, it's got a very odd label. The name is probably questionable, and people ask, "Oh, what what's this drink?" And you go, "Oh, it's it's this." It's like, what does it taste like? Oh, it's a cider, you know. <laughs> and that and that's all you're allowed to give as a staff policy. You have yeah. to let people drink it to understand what it is. It very much represents the place as well. The secret bar has a secret yeah. drink, and you just yeah. you know keep keep it under and then if if someone actually can identify it, they like they get kicked out because it's the whole point is that you keep it secret, okay? Yeah, exactly. If anyone knows what it is, they have to be taken away very quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Sandy does not. But she's yeah. just finished. Let's go for it's been a QI day. You know, Bake Off's been off for a couple of weeks now, so she's she's focused on the QI. Yeah. And she decides, oh, it's been, been quite a long day, a lot, a lot of thinking. Uh, I think I'm going to go for something a bit smoother, maybe a wine. So I'm going to go for uh, a wine. Uh, Jack, what have you got? Uh, what's your house red and your house white? So my house red and house white. Again, I, I, I'm quite, I, I don't know what the word is, but I, I do like my wines. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the wine, as you say. I, I'm usually not very good, however, this is purely down to my memory, of the names of the wines. However, I'm very good at remembering where they are from. See, that's more um, impressive than knowing the names. Well, I'll tell you what, a little a little a little secret about, you know, wine connoisseuring and I'm not saying that I am one, but if you can remember where the wine is from that you like, that's half the battle. Yeah, because it's it's how they right, don't quote me on this, but it's because right. the grapes because the weather changes the grape, right? So the the, the way the grape is grown or yeah. blossomed or ripened, I think that's the word I'm trying to find. Exactly. Um, decides how that. So yeah, if you if you get a New Zealand red, usually they're going to taste somewhat the same because it's the same type of grape. Exactly. Yes, uh, it's fairly as in it's fairly consistent year through year. Yeah. Exactly. So my house red would be a red from Argentina Ooh. because yeah, some of the best. I'd say actually the best red, along with some of the other best red I've ever had in my life, is a bottle from Argentina. So I've had very good experiences from that. So that would be, whatever whatever that would encompass, the house red would be from Argentina. And the house white would probably be, uh, actually, it would, I, it would be a bit more of a classic. It would be, the house white would be from Italy. Ah, Yes. Uh, because again, I've 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 been I've been to Italy a couple of times, and it's a place. Uh, Venice is a place very close to my heart, and uh, the white in uh, Tuscany is uh, an extremely good quality. So that's that's what I'd lay down. Okay, I'm I'm going to help you out here. So you know Evita? Do you know the musical Evita? I, I yes, vaguely. Well, as it's in Argentina, so the white the red is an Evita red. Yes. And the name. white, question is, can I name a famous Italian? <laughs> uh, the, the, the Mario Brothers. The, <laughs> the Mario Brothers white. There's no sort of, you know, alliteration yeah. there, nothing in that works. The Mario yeah. Brothers white. Yeah, not, uh, not the Da Vinci white, no, not the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the Donatello not. Sauvignon, like you know, yeah, there's the yeah, best. Exactly. <laughs> no, just the Mario Bros. I like to think it's the Mario Bros. As in the the B R O S dot. Yes, yeah. Brothers. Mario um, Bros. White. White, yes, which is extremely classy. I mean, that's uh, what you're going for. You know, you got the Avita Red and then the Mario Bros. Dot yeah. White. <laughs> It's just got Luigi on the front. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh yeah, oh, it would be a shame, because if, if you had the red and the white, it could be like Luigi was on the white and Mario was on the red, but yeah, Avita's stolen it. Avita's stolen it, so it's not, so we can't go for the Mario red. And, oh, well, I quite like the Mario red and the Luigi white, I won't lie. And, well, I mean, it is your pub, so you know <laughs> feel what, free. You know I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Avita, you've been ousted. By Mario. <laughs> it was the political coup no one saw coming. Um, no. Fantastic. Uh, moving on then, uh, Sandy, she's going to go for the for the Mario Red, I think. Yes. Yeah. She's a fan of that. And as well as that, because it has been a hell of a long day at the old QI studio, mm. she's going for just a shot 
of something a bit stronger. So, she asks you, Jack, what three spirits do you have? Because as everyone knows, a pub only has three spirits. Only ever has three spirits. Exactly. So, first spirit for me would be gin, because I am a huge fan of gin and tonic, and there is a lot of you know, cocktails and the like that you can make with gin. And so I think that's a very staple. It's one. quite like a versatile beverage. It's a versatile, exactly. So uh, that would be the first one. Second one would be my personal favourite spirit, which is tequila. Hello, uh, <laughs> uh, party yeah. animal. Hello, I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a huge fan of tequila. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the salt and the lemon thing, it's all great. This is a true um, trivia fact about Jack's new album. Half the songs were created when he was off his head on tequila. Yes, that is that is actually uh, that is a true fact. Uh, it's more like two thirds, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there's, a, there's a notable difference between the ones that weren't recorded on tequila and the ones that were. There, there's quite a few like party ones, and there's a third of it is just horrifically melancholic. And that was the that was the hangover draft. Yeah, the ones that were are significantly better. Um, so yeah, it's gin, tequila. And then my third spirit. Now, because I am a bit crazy, not not not. This is not a spirit I, I am choosing through for personal because of personal consumption, but rather I like the idea of having absinthe in my pub <laughs> <laughs> because I am a chaotic human being. You're, I'm sorry, your your spirits do not align with the name the library in whatsoever. <laughs> And I think that's part of the fun. <laughs> that is the fun. You, you've got the mysterious cider, you've got the Mario Brothers red and white, and yeah. you've now got fucking absinthe and tequila. Because the library is something with all sorts of knowledge and things you wouldn't expect to find, and I think that's the kind of idea I, I feel like I'm going down. I also like the idea of having a clear gin, a brown tequila, and a bright green absinthe. Yes, because nothing shouts health. And, like, and, and good fortune, like well, neon the, green. Something that exudes the same colour as uranium. <laughs> well, most absinthe does contain uh, trace amounts of uranium. That's like the, the warning they have to put on it. Mine would definitely contain more than trace, but uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, Sandy is going to go, uh, she's going to ask for your recommendation on her spirit. So what spirit do you recommend for Sandy? Oh, now... Sandy, I, I can see, I, I can imagine you, you enjoying a good gin. I, of course, uh, you know, a tequila, for me, you can never go wrong. But for you today, I think, Sandy, after you've, you've, you've had such a, a busy day, I think the absinthe is the way to go for you today. It's, it's been one of those QI days, you know. One of those QI days. You know, Alan Davis has actually won. <laughs> <laughs> It's a ridiculous time, so I think that absinthe is, is required. Yeah, someone actually got plus points instead yeah. of like minus 87, uh, mm-hmm. and it really just it wasn't a good day for her. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. So Sandy's gone away with her uh, Mario Red and her absinthe. Um, absinthe. Yeah. Uh, she's gone to the table. Congratulations, Jack. That's the first step done. But when she sits down, mm. she looks up at one of the bookshelves, and you've got like a poster for a book, but it's clever marketing because on that book is actually your mm-hmm. signature cocktail. So yeah. it's, it's a bit quirky, you know, and we yeah, like quirky. Yeah. Sandy loves a bit of quirkiness. Uh, of and so what I want to know is the title of the book mm-hmm. and the blurb, uh, which includes the ingredients and a little, bit of, li- little bit of, you know, snazziness. Like, you know, yeah, really, really sell it to me, Jack. Well, my signature cocktail would actually be one that me and me mum uh, came up with together. <laughs> North uh, represent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, titled A Cactus Jack, where it is, as you may imagine, it is tequila based. It has a shot of syrup, a shot of, uh, or a bit more of a shot of lemon juice. Uh, it also can have uh, soda water in it, but not too much because it will dilute it a bit. And we don't want that. <laughs> and we don't want that. A sprinkling of chili flakes on the top. And um, if you are so inclined, given the nature of this pub, uh, this is this is a, this is a, an addition I'm making now, not something that me and my mum uh, add to it. But if you were to add a drop of absinthe, just a drop, just to give it that that that, that cactus glow, that green that, glow, that cactus glow. So yes, it's effectively uh, a cactus jack is tequila, syrup, 
lemon juice, some soda water. If you soda water is is optional if you want to dilute it a bit. Which and Sandy then, definitely does not. <laughs> definitely does not. Chili flakes on the top and a drop of absinthe. I like that. I'm also thinking like. In terms of your poster, it's like a spaghetti western. It's like a standoff between like a bottle of tequila, and and like a little bit of soda water, and then the tequila's obviously winning. Uh, that's fantastic. I really like that. You've, you've put a lot of thought into it. I like that. I like it a lot. Yeah. Well, a bit of time passes by. Uh, Sandy's enjoying a drink. She's also got a cactus jack. She's very much enjoyed that. Uh, you're just carrying on tending to the people, and then after a little while, she calls you over. And you sit yeah. down next to her, and she goes, "Hello, I'm Sandy," and you go, "Hello, I'm Jack." Uh, and it's it's very fun, you know. A lot of banter yeah. thrown back and forth. A uh, lot, lot of heavy wit, which I cannot replicate here. Um, but she then asks you. Uh, she then, you know, she looks at you and she goes, uh, "Well, Jack, I, I very much enjoyed the drinks you've had to offer. I enjoy the vibe of the place. I like the idea. It's very eclectic. You've got lots of different things going on, a lot of variety. But there's so much going on that I'm a little bit." Confused. I don't know really what the message of the pub is, and to help me, you know, encapsulate that and, and envision it, I need to know what your best pub experience was. Now that might seem like a very tenuous segue, but but hear me mm. out, uh, because I need to know, Jack, you know, as an investor, who you really are and what you're trying to imbibe into your own space. So mm. to know that, I need to know what your best pub experiences was and how you're going to replicate it. So, Jack, pray tell. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's always, as you, as you could, uh, I imagine you, you know it, it's difficult to pin down the best pub experience because there, there, there have been so many times where I've been in a pub with friends and we have stayed there much longer than we should have, drunk much more than we should have. But what the, the, the story I'll tell now is just, I'm, I'm telling it for its uniqueness and also its weirdly strong connection to what the library represents. Oh, okay. So I was at, uh, I was in a pub with my uh, with my best mate Henry, and we were on a pub on the King's Road in London because I live just across the river from the King's Road, and we were on this pub and we were having a great time and you know we were talking and drinking and all that and this was all I got to say this was all uh, I'm pretty sure this was last year this was all pre lockdown yeah um, yeah just disclaimer guys we're not breaking any bloody rules yeah just as a disclaimer this was this was i reckon this was this was just over a year ago and we and nothing particularly spectacular was happening it was a, just a pretty good night and then suddenly henry i see henry see something over my shoulder and he says what is that and i turn around and what should be rocking up but a, but a gentleman with a with a hat and a waistcoat and a, you know a pocket watch has rocked up to this pub on a penny farthing <laughs> in the middle of the King's Road, London. He has cycled down the King's Road on a penny farthing and he has stopped at this pub, chained the bike up <laughs> to the lamppost on the corner, the big wheel. Yeah. And then he has come in and he has gone in to get a drink and he's gone and sat down on the table next to us. And us, in our state of complete awe, kind of... We talk for a bit longer, and then we eventually turn to him and say, "Hey, is that how you get around normally?" And he and the answer was effectively yes. <laughs> <laughs> this this man apparently travels from A to B on a penny farthing. It 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 was not clear whether he actually owned a car or even owned a normal bike. <laughs> he but just had the penny farthing. From everything that we heard, and I'd like to think that he only owns this penny farthing, and not only that, goes around looking like a 1920s gentleman, which is something that I really appreciate from the heart. And we had a really great chat. And he told us that he is actually part of the England national penny farthing polo team. I mean, polo penny fathering is yeah. just everything um, you could ever want. Yeah, polo, <laughs> but instead of horses, penny farthings. And he is part of the National England team for polo penny farthing. And this just I'm not going to lie, he's the only member. <laughs> no one else <laughs> does it. He's the only member we've heard of. <laughs> But this absolutely blew us away because everything he said was just incredible. And and it, it's something that very much sticks in my mind because it is, I think, de to definitely today, one of the most unique experiences I have ever, ever had. And he finished his, I think he had a, about one or two pints. He finished them, you know, said his, said his farewells, unchanged his, his, his farthing, 
and then just cycled off. And and it was it was it was just such a bizarre moment because then we sat back down and kind of had to ask ourselves, did that actually happen? I mean, that is a fantastic story. My favourite detail is that he locked up the big wheel as if that was the wheel people would steal. Yeah, yeah, honestly, like right. <laughs> he locked he locked it up as if it's not exactly a conspicuous thing to try and steal. I just, oh. I just, I can't get, that was a fan, and also, Sandy's 100% going to steal that, and tell it as one of her anecdotes on QI, or on Bake yeah. Off. Honestly, she will though, that's the thing, and people would believe her. Yeah, they would, and the fact that I believe you shows that you're on a very, very similar kilter, so congratulations oh. there. Sandy's yeah. very impressed by that story, that is, and it very much, you know, it, it, it embodies the feeling of the place as well, you know, it's a bit, bit, bit old, but also got a, kind of like an aesthetic of, you know, the good old days. And it's secret, and as you know, you can only enter a secret place if you're in 1920s attire. Exactly. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Sandy's very happy. You're about to leave, but she, she as, as you're leaving, she just calls over, um, Jack, could you please get me the food menu? I'm a bit, I'm a bit mm. hungry, Jack. I fancy a bit of grub. You oblige, you bring over uh, the menu, and you place it in front of her. Mm. Now, on that menu is three items. Uh, mm. It could be a starter main dessert, or three mains, three desserts, Whatever you mm. bloody like, it's your pub. Uh, one thing I need to mention, though, is that uh, Sandy actually, you know, she's a very uh, intelligent person, as we all know. And uh, just before her QI uh, audition, she, she built a time machine. She just finished time machine. She's been working on it for 20 years or so. Yeah, yeah, uh, just yeah. keeping her mind closed doors. And anyway, she went into audition and she just froze. She got so nervous, she messed it up. She's like, God damn it, I need to do this again. Got on a time machine, smashed it second time round. Mm. Point of that anecdote, Jack, is mm -hmm. that she has a time machine, which means that you can, if you would like, pick specific meals from your life. For instance, Ooh. a nice fish and chips you had when you were nine years old, or a Ooh. fantastic donut you had after your graduation, which I'm sorry, I realise you didn't actually get the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> the donut you ate whilst you received an email stating you had completed your degree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what three items do you have? Well, <clears throat> I am, as, as quirky as this, as this pub uh, comes across, I am a huge fan of traditional pub food. Amen. And as, uh, and I'm also, uh, I'm also a believer in, a, in, a, in a, well, I say a believer, that's the wrong word. I'm a huge fan of good veggie meals. Mm. In, in pubs, uh, I'm uh, you know uh, obviously you know the the, the chicken and, and mushroom uh, pie and all that is is a fantastic uh, thing. But I myself personally will be picking three veggie pub foods. So what I'd have is to start uh, as my first main because uh, I go for three mains is a mushroom pie, uh, like a proper pub pie with a mash and gravy and you know peas if you so incline. Mushy peas or normal peas? I go for normal peas. I'm not a huge fan of mushy peas, actually. It was going so well, Jack. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Here's the thing. You'd have the option. Nice. I, I'd personally go for normal peas, but you would have the option. So, yes, that would definitely be one of the meals, because a hearty pub pie is one of my favourite things on earth. My second main dish uh, would be a... The equivalent of a steak and chips, but instead of a steak, it's halloumi. Halloumi, nice. So you can either have that beer battered or grilled, and that. Comes I feel like in a pub, it's got to be beer. Everything bloody beer battered, chips, and burgers, battered. The, the bloody yeah. buns, everything is beer battered. So you imagine that beer battered halloumi, a thing of uh, chips, gravy as well. All three dishes will come with gravy. Uh, I think it would be very difficult. Veggie to gravy. Yes, and gravy, and then you know something like maybe maybe put some. What, what kind of greenery would you want? Maybe some uh, some 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 carrots on the on the side. I like, like the way you went for greenery. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's> green carrots. <laughs> yeah, healthy, uh, they're not um, off. They're just green. You know, yeah. deal with it. <laughs> and my third dish would be a classic uh, Sunday roast. But a, uh, a veggie Sunday roast. And can I just say, one of the best Sunday roasts I've ever had was at a, another pub in London, which was a, a veggie nut roast. Ooh. And it was a fa absolutely fantastic. It was so nice. So I'd have, I'd have that equivalent. I'd have a nut roast with a good heap of gravy, 
uh, and some you know some steamed vegetables with that some steamed spinach and broccoli and runner beans and the like steamed spinach really hits the spot i think on a roast especially yeah steamed spinach is such a fantastic thing so those would be my three dishes of choice because they are three mains but they are uh, they'd be big hearty meals you'd only need one yeah 100 percent. that's i like that you know like for me you've got to have these big distinctive meals that that really do a job and the whole point is at the end of the day to soak up a bit of that alcohol and each one of yours does very much so i'm gonna take a little bit of a detour here which i don't often do because i'm usually very much straight to the point yes, but um we so often talk about the drinking at pubs we don't talk about the aftermath and a very mm. one of the greatest hangover cures i've ever experienced jack is something that I've done with you, which is at the Birmingham, the University of Birmingham, there is a place called Joe's, and on a Sunday, they do the most delicious English breakfast. Yeah. And going there and just letting everything get soaked up by that, by the sausages and the, and the bloody tomatoes and the beans, absolutely mm. amazing. Incredible. If, if, you know, that would, that would, that would be my, uh, my, uh, Oh, what's the word? Uh, honorary fourth meal. Yeah. A full veggie English breakfast. From Joe's. It's really good. Yeah, I just thought I'd give them a yeah. shout out because when I think of drink when I think of drinking, I think of being hungover and then I think yeah. of Joe's. Then I think of Joe's. That was that was an excellent time. I remember I remember we've done that more than once. Yes, several <laughs> times. <laughs> Uh, amazing. I think Sandy's going to go for the nut roast, only because it's the one I, I, I secretly would quite quite like to try. Uh, fantastic choices. Now, Sandy gets her food, she eats it, has a very nice time. She's sewed up enough to, to, to fancy doing something a bit different. So she gets up to you, uh, Jack, and she, asks, and she asks you this exactly. She goes, Jack, what game slash activity do you have? And you reply... So the answer is very simple. In the corner of the pub is a, is a TV quite a large TV, and under that TV is a Nintendo Wii, and the only game available in that Nintendo Wii is Wii Sports. I wish there was more of me, Jack. In fact, you know what, I think I can do this. I've just added some applause. (laughs) <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much um, fantastic choice I don't think we've had anyone suggest Wii Sports and how have they not I generally I, I think I might steal that I, I usually I mean for me I love pool I love playing pool mm. and someone suggested a free pool table which is just you know fantastic but yeah, I must say good. Wii Sports you get everyone involved get the bowling yeah. going get the bloody baseball fight What's his name? Max on the boxing. Max on the boxing. Matt, yeah. yeah. Superb choice, Jack. Sandy's just about to, to give Matt a proper going to on the boxing. Yes. She gets a call. It's Alan Davies, been locked out of his bloody house again. She's, she, yeah. she remembers his coach. She goes outside to take the call. Uh, she gets him back in. She shuts off her phone. Turns around. What does she see by the door that she didn't see on her way in? A blackboard with a little blackboard message that pub owners like to, to you know, to, to, to put a little message on there to capture the interest of passers-by. So they'll come in for a nice refreshing pint. What I want to know, Jack, is what have you gone for? I've gone for, Alex, the message very simply, it's a little overdue. I like that. That's kind of sweet. Yeah. Because, uh... You know, I, I think I think that fits in very well with the library theme. The Overdue Library Book. Oh, as it okay. Went. Well, I missed that. That went right over my fucking head. But that is a very good... <laughs> well, I'm glad I said it then. Uh, not, uh, an Overdue Library Book, which is something uh, most most people have probably experienced by accident. Yeah. Um, but uh, having a little sign, it's a little overdue, in front of a, a pub called The Library, I think uh, fits the aesthetic somewhat. That is absolutely perfect. I've got no more questions. Sandy's very happy with that choice, Jack. Sandy walks back in. First thing she hears, Jack, is an absolute tune. And no, it's not Dance with the Devil by the Great Idea. That's coming on at the end. Um, unless you have gone for that album, then that would be really, <laughs> that'd be really awkward. But anyway, Sandy's, you know, bobbing along, she's having a great time, and she goes, she goes, turns, she goes, Jack, what is this song now? What Sandy doesn't realise, Jack, is that you've just bought a nice classic jukebox, and on that jukebox you've bobbed on one album, 
Mm-hmm. You were going to put more on, but you realised that this one album was the perfect album for your pub. The punters bloody love it. Mm-hmm. What I want to know is what album have you picked, and what song in particular is Sandy boogieing away to? So the album of choice I have picked happens to be... no. Well, I guess this says a lot about the aesthetic I've built, because it happens to be my favourite album of all time. Amazing. Hunky Dory by David Bowie which has such classics as Changes and Life on Mars on it. My favourite Bowie uh, song? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's... Um, uh, and I think the album as itself, it's a very uh, acoustic-sounding album. It's one of those fan- phenomenal albums where you can actually hear the studio it was recorded in throughout the album. And it's a very lovely, homely album, and it's got some cracking songs on it. And the song that I imagine Sandy Tolsvig is booging away to is a song called Kooks by David Bowie, which is a song that he wrote about his first child that he had, all about how he might be a bit awkward as a parent, (laughs) all about how uh, he doesn't know exactly what he'll be doing, but he'll be doing his best. Oh, yeah really lovely song and i can really see sandy uh boogieing away to that and i'd recommend to anybody not only just the song kooks but if you haven't listened to that album the whole way through because it's just it, it it's it puts a smile on my face every time i hear it well you heard it here first hunky dory by david bowie give it a listen mm-hmm. now um in fact it, uh, we'll we'll make the the password for getting into the library something related to that album mm-hmm. so that they have to have listened to it to yes. get in. Fantastic. Now, the night carries on. Uh, Sandy's having a great time. Uh, you think it's going really well. Uh, and it's coming up to closing and everyone's leaving. Sandy's still there. She's one of the last couple of people. And so uh, she calls you over and, you know, you're basically done with everything. So you come and sit next to her. You, you might grab yourself a drink of your own. Mm. And Sandy's going to look, hey, it's a great place. I love the idea. Uh, as I say, I love the eclectic choice of drinks. We sports, you got an applause. I've never done that before on the podcast. There, there are some good things going on here. And the green carrots were a personal favourite of mine. Green carrots are huge, yeah. But I have to say, you're too good to be true, Jack Petherham. You, you've got no faults. You, you're too faultless. And in a way, it freaks me out because everyone's got their flaws. Yeah. So what I need to know, and it's very important for mm-hmm. me, Mm. Sandy, is what is your most embarrassing pub experience? Have you ever had one? And if you have, tell me so that I know that you're just like me and you're no different. <laughs> I'm just like the normal people. <laughs> um, I, so, embarrassing pub experiences. You see, there is definitely... A story, but it is not strictly to do with a pub. It is to do with a bar. I'll allow it. Uh, if if that's if that's as long happens. as it, as long as it's embarrassing, I'll take anything. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. It's quite the uh, it's quite the story, and it's I'll set the scene uh, of Los Angeles in California. I mean, already touche. <laughs> <laughs> so um. There I am with, yet again, Henry, and I'm sure he won't mind me saying this story, and I will say that there is there's quite a roller coaster in this. We were staying, this is the first time we had gone out to LA together, and obviously you are not allowed to drink until you are 21, and us not being complete idiots uh, had not drunk a drop that entire week because it's not worth it. But on the last night... We thought, well, let's go to the hostel across the road from us because they do their, they do food and they're also a bar as well. So if we do that, that's fine. And we will uh, see if we get served. We have some food and that's all fine. Well, sorry, we go to order food and then the waitress asks us, would you like to have some drinks? And we said, we'll be honest, yes, but we are only 19. And she was like, okay, here we go. If you, if you show me your IDs and don't say anything, I will serve you for the rest of the night. And we were like, deal. So we had a couple of beers uh, with our food and that was all good. And then we went to the bar afterwards because uh, why not? Uh, because we were being served. Yeah, exactly. 
And what we did is we ordered tequila shots. Right? So it always, always comes out to that bloody tequila, Jack. Which was always, which is a nice rounded, you know, thing from earlier, uh, which was absolutely fine by me because I absolutely love tequila, as you know. So we were having tequila shots, and then we were having more, and then we were having more, and then we were having more. And what I didn't know was that Henry was not only buying for himself, but buying for other people around the bar, whereas I was buying for... I can't... I I seem to remember most of that night watching whatever sport was going on on the TV. Because I was in a very happy, mellow place of just not really wanting to speak. And so I kind of watched. Um, It had got to about, I want to say about 1am. And Henry stumbles up to me and says, it's time for us to go. And I I said, yes, it is. I said, okay, let me get the bill. And it's not every day, Alex, that you get a bill for $300. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> and I <laughs> I was not sober, but this is how I know that I was, um, I was okay, because I did the maths in my head, and it was correct. <laughs> so I paid that, which was the... We, we, we had set a budget for that trip that week, and that bill was the rest of the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we had, we had not spent that much. Yeah, so, and it was your last night, so you you kind of made its way back. Yeah, exactly, which was something. So I paid it because Henry was in no state to. I grabbed him, and he put his arm around me, and we walk out of this hostel, and outside of the hostel are two police cars with Fuck four, off. Ar- four armed policemen. And they had like I don't even know if they were there for a specific reason, but each one of them had a um a rifle. And me and my drunk mind, my drunk British mind, which is <laughs> used to seeing what pepper spray on police officers or buttons, not bloody AK forty sevens. Seeing seeing assault rifles. And I look at them and I think, oh no, because if Henry says something stupid right now. We're going to prison for the night. (laughs) And so but one of the policemen looks at Henry and then looks at me and goes, is he going to get home all right? And I said, yes, officer. And I put my hand over his mouth, which he tells me um, apparently that stopped him breathing for a bit. But like, it was definitely (laughs) worth it. Some things are more important, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And then I dragged him back to where we were staying and... Long story short, not only have I never seen Henry Moore hungover, but he has not drunk tequila since. <laughs> what a perfect way to encapsulate this whole podcast. We go from a love of tequila to a story about tequila to never touching tequila again. Exactly. And Henry just all the way through, just, just popping up here and there. Through. He's a he's a reoccurring force in my life. It's hard to uh, find a story without him. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. Fantastic, and I'll tell you what, Sandy is very much pleased, and she's going to tell you this right now, congratulations, you've got your investment for an unspecified amount of money for legal reasons. Congratulations, you've done it. And as I incredibly inserted in earlier, Mm. Sandy has a time machine. Mm. And so, as a signing on bonus, she's going to let you use that time machine to have a drink with not one, not two, but five people. Dead or alive, friend or foe, celebrity or non-celebrity. And as it's a time machine, Sandy walks out the door. You might have noticed I'm saying Sandy because I can't pronounce Torvig very well the whole way through the podcast. Just something to look out for. And uh, she walks out and immediately walks in is your five people. Jack, Mm -hmm. who have you gone for? Who have I gone for? So... Uh, it would be no surprise that uh, first on that list would be uh, Mr. David Bowie himself. Of course. Uh, a, a, my all-time favourite musician and uh, the closest thing I have to a hero. I would absolutely want him there. Uh, number two on that list would be Sir David Attenborough. He's back. <laughs> uh, he's absolutely back and he cannot. Be, and I, I, I refuse to avoid him because... Uh, <laughs> Again, one of my favourite people. So there's two. Who would be on that? Who? So, I reckon also on that list would be. To be honest, actually, I would want I would want to bring on uh, Nina Simone. 
Great answer. Nina Simone, in my opinion, Feeling Good is the greatest song that has ever been written. And I would want to meet the mind behind such a song because uh, as a result, it is one of my favorite songs. And uh, I would, and she is such an incredible individual from history. And I would absolutely love to know what she was like. So there's number three. I think number four, but just because I'd like the aesthetic, number four and five would be Stephen Fry and... And I would bring Sandy along. Oh, that's sweet. I'd want, because the two of them, again, I'm such a huge fan of the two of them. And QI, again, one of my favorite programs. And uh, they just, they're just brilliant. To, uh, I've always loved them as individuals. So I'd say that was um, David Bowie, David Attenborough, Nina Simone, Stephen Fry and Sandy Toltzvig. What an absolute tour de force. What a fantastic group of people. And I must say... Stephen Fry's doing bloody well. I think he's now been mentioned four times. Well, um, that doesn't surprise me at all. He's a pretty incredible human being. Uh, he has bloody three autobiographies. Is that interesting? Mm. Um, incredible. Jack, you, you, you've done very well. You have an amazing night with an amazing group of fantastically talented people. And, you know, it, all the way through the night, they've been showering you with praise for the library. It's basically like a secret celebrity club now. They've all, well, I mean, I hope David Bowie as well has listened to the album, so they all know the password. Yeah. Yeah. And they just shower you with drinks, and, you know, you get everything for free, and you're having a great time, which is kind of, you know, it should be because it's your pub. Um, so you should be getting them for free. And at the end of the night, you go, look, I've had the most wonderful time, so screw it, I'm going to get a round in. And before they have a chance to tell you what they want, you go straight to the bar. So what I want to know for your final question of the podcast, Jack, is what do you think each of your guests would like to drink? You can either use your drinks or just any drink. And then finally, the most important question of all is you're at a pub, you go up to a bar, what drink would you get? So <clears throat> I can see Stephen Fry enjoying a very stiff gin and tonic. Maybe something with, 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 a, with a fancy, with a, with a lime or something in it. I can see... Uh, I can see Sandy on the harder stuff, maybe something <laughs> like uh, a brandy. Yeah. Brandy for Sandy. For some reason, I, I envision I envision David Attenborough si- drinking simply orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was generally going to say uh, cranberry juice. I just feel like he'd have like, like yeah. a soft drink. 100%. I feel like he would just go, regardless of whether he does drink or not, I, I feel like he would... That's just his favourite, you know? A cranberry juice or an orange juice. Yeah, exactly. So you've got uh, Bowie and... Bowie and Nina. Nina. Uh, I can see Bowie going for a... Um, See, now it depends what <laughs> stage of his life he's at. Because if we're talking Ziggy Stardust and Aladdin Sane, we are talking the tallest shot of absinthe you've ever seen, <laughs> laced with uh, all sorts of drugs. Yeah. But if we're talking later life, David Bowie, I could see him simply having a whiskey on the rocks. Yeah, I think both work for different aesthetics yeah. in this time. And Nina Simone... Nina Simone, I could see having a a really healthy glass of red wine, possibly even the uh, Mario Red. The not the Mario Red. Possibly even the Mario Red, <laughs> although I don't know whether I should ins- insult her. No, just uh, just tell her it's the Evita Red, even though we all know yeah. it's yes, the Mario I, Red. Uh, yes, I can give her the Evita Red instead, which is much more fitting for a uh, for for a person of that caliber. Uh, and that leaves Jack just you. So just what's me. what's your drink? What's your go-to drink? My go-to drink. Well, my go-to beer when I go to a pub will probably be a Doom Bar. Uh, like I said, it's my favourite, and it kind of encompasses a lot of you know what I'm in the mood for. I generally, uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm absolutely not a beer snob in any way, but what I like to try and do is try beer that I've never seen before. Yeah, me I too. I quite like that. It's quite a, it's quite a, uh, because then it's just something I can say, oh yeah, that's, that's nice, or that's not nice, I'm never having that again. Um, but on average, it'll be a Doom Bar 
and if something maybe if I want something a little more um, little less fruity, then uh, then maybe an Estrella. An Estrella, damn, that's a that's a yeah. that's an interesting choice to finish on. Um, I know. Jack, you've done it. Congratulations. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, I'm just going to say a couple of thank yous if you don't mind waiting around. First sure. one is to Sam Nason for the graphics. Second one mm. is to the utter legend Jack Petherum for the jingle. Oh. Um, stop it, you. <laughs> and third one is to all of our adoring fans uh, and all the fans of uh, the album that's going to come out and it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to publicise it on this as well, just for you, because you're a great guy. Um, oh, thank you. Very much. <laughs> and you let me use the song at the end. And finally, a second thank you, right back to you, Jack, for coming on and being absolutely fantastic. It's been an absolute world of fun. Thank you very much for having me. I'm, you're bloody welcome. <laughs> to finish off this podcast very specially, um, Jack has allowed us uh, to use his and Henry's song, Dance with the Devil, which is genuinely, like, not even a joke, one of my favourite songs of all time. And I was absolutely gutted it wasn't wasn't my number one song of the year, but next year is the year. <laughs> uh, so, uh, to talk us into that song, I'm going to shut up. Thank you all for listening. Uh, and it's a final little thing from the fantastic Jack Bethram. Over to you, Jack. And coming up next on Alex Ravenhall's How to Build the Bob podcast is a little London-based band, a duo called The Great Idea, featuring Jack and Henry. And this next song is one of their singles, Dance the Devil. I hope you enjoy. If you were to dance with the devil, may I ask one thing? Please listen to the music, please watch your steps, please listen to the way he sings. you can see Cause God only knows I've tried Let's hope Lucifer's got a place for me This train's going to heaven I'm getting out of the next stop Because hell is where rock and roll is Don't you know Yeah, that's just showbiz Hell is where rock and roll is Don't you know? Yeah, that's just showbiz He might take you for a boring dance Or maybe just a little jive Dancing all night in the land of the dead But feeling so Just showbiz Come on, hell is where rock and roll is Don't you know? Yeah, that's just showbiz Come on, that is where rock and roll is And all 